So in this video, we are installing the aftermarket transfer case and the gear shift. Now, this particular transfer case we're using uh, helps us get the proper gear ratio as well as uh, being able to handle the high RPMs and the instant torque of the uh, Tesla motor. All right, now we need to do some modification because the drive shaft or the shaft that comes out on the old transfer case, the spline on the shaft comes out about, looks like three inches. This is only about an inch. Bring that back to that distance there so that this edge can hit the flat surface on the inside of the transfer case. Gotcha. That way when we put on the bolt and tighten it up, we're tightening up against the flat surface, not the seal. Gotcha. So you were able to Machine this hub down so that it uh, fits over top of the spline, so you can. Uh, so we we shaft. we machine this hub down a half an inch, and then machine the the uh, diameter of it down so that it would fit the race and fit the uh, and allow for the bolt the nut to go all the way on. So the next thing you do is uh, have another one to match that, but just with a bigger spline on this side, the diameter of this spline. So this is the uh, billet aluminum mount for this transfer case on the bottom. What we're gonna do is take this piece of steel and cut a half circle out of it so that it'll fit this diameter. And then we'll put holes in it to match these bolt holes so that we can use this plate to mount the transfer case to the truck. All right, now as far as the, uh, the hub goes that connects to the drive shaft. See, this, this plate's gonna be at a 45 so it'll miss it. So the original transfer case was three and a half inches longer than the aftermarket transfer case. So what we ended up doing was extending the drive shaft three and a half inches so that the flanges could meet. All right, so we're making the uh, gear shifter that uh, shifts the differential from high to low to neutral for the front and rear differentials. And uh, so what we're gonna do is install it like such. So it's gonna sit here flush with the higher level. And there's gonna be a bracket that goes from there, from this side down to the floor. Uh, it's gonna be sort of like an L bracket or an S bracket. That's gonna make sure that it sits level. And then there's gonna be two support brackets on either side to the front and to the rear. And what that's gonna, that's gonna give it its, uh, its uh, support on all, on all four sides and we'll bolt it to the top level. Okay, so we're fabricating the uh, shifter linkage. So the original link, linkage was, uh, was just all thread with turnbuckles. It was about eight inches too short. So what we did was we cut the all thread in half uh, and then we used a piece of tubing and we screwed the all threads into the tubing and then welded the ends. Uh, that way we could uh, extend this out to the 16 and a half inches needed to connect the shifter to the uh, transfer case. Now, the way this works is 
The rear is the master. That is the one that determines uh, whether the front gets engaged or not. So the rear head can go either high or low by itself, but the front can't go to high or low until the rear is in position first. So the rear can go high, low, or neutral. The front can stay in neutral, but it can't go to high or low until the rear is in position. So here we go. All right, go ahead, Bill. So now that's rear low, front low, front back to neutral, rear high, front high, front neutral, rear neutral. The front will not move unless the rear has been engaged first. That is so, so that your front axle and your rear axle don't spin out of sync and they don't work or bind against each other.